In this video, we are going to set up the React Router DOM and also the base layout for our application so that we can go to multiple pages. One page can be for login, one page can be for get all accounts, and one for the profile. The first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that I am installing React Router DOM. The React Router DOM package is going to allow me to go to different pages. Now, let's go ahead and run our app again. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a base layout, which will consist of the menu as well as the body. So function, base layout, and in the base layout, we will have props. And then we can do export default base layout. In this base layout, we can go ahead and return some sort of a JSX. And over here, we can create a very simple menu. Now, you can create a separate component for the menu also. That is perfectly fine. In the menu, we will have really basic links, let's say login and accounts and profile. Let's go ahead and render base layout. I'm going to go to index.js and instead of rendering amp component, I'm going to go ahead and use base layout. Let's go ahead and import base layout. Import base layout from base layout. Okay, so we can see the menu. That is fine. I mean, these are not really links that are being displayed right now, but that is okay. Our home page will be our login page. So on the login page, we would like to see the login component. For the login component, I'm just going to go ahead and create another component, login.js. We will go back to our app component and I'm just going to copy most of the stuff into login component and name this the login component because the app component was kind of like doing the job for the login component anyways. So now we're changing it to the login component. All right. Now let's go ahead and render the login component. Inside the base layout, I can go ahead and render the login component. So now we can see the menu on the top and the login component. But the login component should not be displayed for every single time. It's, it should be based on the URL. So if we are on the home page, which is localhost 3000, the login component is perfectly fine. But if I am on the accounts page, I shouldn't be seeing login component. This is a job for React Router DOM. So let's go ahead and import a bunch of stuff like we will import a lot of stuff from React Router DOM. The first one can be switch, route, and also we will import something that can allow us to create these layouts. So I'm going to import browser, router, switch, and also route from React router DOM. Next, I'm going to go ahead and use the browser router component. And inside the browser router component, we will make sure that we have a base layout. So let's remove the base layout from there. Inside base layout, we're going to have a switch. Now the reason for switch is that once a route is matching, and we're going to go ahead and add a route, 
then it will stop searching for the next route. So route, the path of the route is root and on the root we want to display a component which is the login component. Perfect. We will also go ahead and make sure that this is the exact path. So we're only talking about the root, not slash accounts or slash profile. Next, we can go ahead and create other routes like accounts and also profile. Keeping in mind that we don't really have any component called account or profile. So possibly we should call it something else. Let's say account list or you can say accounts if you want to. Uh, that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to say it account list and profile. The path will be accounts and for the profile, the path will be profile. Let's go ahead and create a component called account list. We will create a very basic component. We will call it account list. And this component is simply going to return an h1 saying account list. Export default account list. Perfect. Same way, we will go ahead and create another component and we will call it profile.js. And we will simply go ahead and change it to profile. In your actual application, your profile component will obviously look different and it will allow the user to look at the profile as well as change the profile. But to keep things simple, we are simply just saying account list as well as the profile. There we go. Okay. So now what we want to do is if we go on the URL, if I go to accounts, I want to see accounts component. But right now you can see that it doesn't really show accounts component, it simply shows us a login component. Inside the base layout, you can see that we have hard-coded the login component. So no matter which route we go to, it will always display us the login component. We can change that and we can say over here props.children, which means that you will display the component which will end up being inside the opening and the closing of the base layout. So based on the path, let's say that we're talking about the profile and you're trying to go to the profile page, then the profile component is returned and all of this will simply have the profile component. The profile component will become a child of base layout, which is later injected into the page. Let me go ahead and go to profile. Interesting. So the profile is not really working. Let's go ahead and make sure that we called our component correctly, like a profile. So let's go ahead and import that profile. There we go. So it looks like it's working. Another thing that we need to do is right now our login accounts and profile components, I can't really click on any of these things. Let's go to our base layout and we will import nav link from React Router DOM. Nav link is going to allow us to make them clickable. Nav link to the root and the nav link will simply read login. Now I can click on the nav link or the login and I can go to the login screen. I'm going to do the same exact thing for accounts as well as the profile, but obviously go to accounts by giving it a URL which we have already set in index.js. And this is for the profile, so we're just going to put profile, profile. Now if I go to accounts, I'm in the accounts page and profile, I'm in the profile page. Great. 
Another thing that we want to do is when the person is actually logging in correctly, meaning if you do log in, we want to take the user directly to the accounts screen without having to click a button on accounts or anything. So once you log in, you will be redirected to the accounts page. So how can we accomplish that? Let's go to the login component. Inside the login component, you have handle login event. Once you are logged in, you can set the token. Now this is our opportunity to do something, meaning we can go to a different page. So right over here, inside the success portion of your login, we can take the user to the accounts page. For this to happen, we can use the history API of the component. In order to use the history API, the first thing we're going to do is get access to the props. Props are automatically passed to each component, but we were ignoring it. They were still being passed, but we were not using it. But now I have placed a variable over there. This means the props will be in the variable. Next, I can say props.history.push and then the route that you want to go. So we want to go to accounts. So I'm just going to go ahead and say accounts. Now, if I go ahead and actually log in using John Doe and a password, I should be able to go to the accounts screen. Perfect. From the account screen, you can make a request or do whatever you want to do. Let's go ahead and make a request in the account screen. We already have the request, which is this one. Now let's go to the account screen. The best way to perform this request will be to use use effect and use state. So I'm going to go ahead and say use state and use effect from React. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a local state called account and set accounts, where the initial value of that particular state is an empty string. Next, we will implement use effect. Use effect is going to get fired when the component is mounted on the virtual DOM and it will also get fired whenever the state of the props change. We don't really want that to happen. We only want to fire it once. So let's go ahead and put a dependency for empty array. Next, we can go ahead and create a function called get all accounts. We don't really have that function. So let's go ahead and create this. The reason that we're creating a function get all accounts and not performing the fetch inside the use effect is that we may later want to reuse it. And creating these small functions always help. Okay, so now let's go ahead and see what's going on. Well, we don't really have access to the credentials. And if we don't have access to the credentials, then the question is, well, how can we perform the request? There are multiple ways of fixing this issue. For now, what we can do is we can simply put the credential or at least the username inside the local storage. That will allow us to extract it from the local storage and then pass the credential over here. Let's go to our login component and we will simply say local storage dot set item username and then we will get the username which in this case will be credentials dot username we will eventually you will see that we will replace that with something else like global state but right now username inside the local storage is fine next we will go ahead and try to get the username from local storage.get item and passing in 
the username key. Once we have that, we can simply go ahead and replace this with username and we should be able to pass it. Another thing we need to make sure is that we are importing Axios. So let's go ahead and import Axios from Axios. Now we need to make sure that we are logged in successfully. So let's go ahead and log in successfully. And in the console, we can see that as soon as we go to the account screen, we are able to fetch all the accounts. If you want to put the accounts in the local state, then we can also do that. We can say set accounts and then get the value response.data, which is actually accounts. Now, if I go ahead and look into the components, and I can search for a component called account list. Okay, so currently we don't really have anything, but let's go ahead and log in again. And hopefully our account list should have something now. There we go. We have a couple of different accounts. You can see checking account and savings account. So we were able to fetch all of those different things. Now, what if I am not logged in? What will happen then? So let's go to the application and clear this out. Okay, so I'm not logged in now. And let's go and start from the login page. Well, there are a couple of things. I'm not logged in, but why am I looking at accounts and profile if I'm not logged in? They shouldn't be there if I'm not logged in. Another thing to keep in mind is that I am not logged in, but I can simply go to a different URL. Maybe my friend or somehow I got to know this URL and I can still land on this page. The page doesn't really display anything because I'm not logged in. So on the server side, it is protected. And the same thing for profile. Even though I am not logged in, I can still go to that page. And that page doesn't really display anything, but I shouldn't even be allowed to go on that page. Let's go ahead and first start with dealing with the menu. The menu should not show me the accounts and profile if I am not logged in. This will require global Redux state. So in the next lecture, we will be integrating global Redux state. So whenever we change the state in one component, the other component will automatically get refreshed. 